What's poppin' everybody? This is Saber Wolf 4. The US International Championships 2019 have finally concluded. And just like I always do, I pretty much switched between the Twitch and YouTube stream and just watched about 90% of the whole TCG stream. Watched almost everything. And we're gonna go through the highlights of the tournament. But first of all, crowning the winners is what I always do. For the juniors, we have Benny Billinger from Canada. He was using Faramasa and Buzzwell GX. For seniors, we have Isaiah Bratner from the USA. He was using the new Zorok GX variant with Persian GX and Nakanato GX. To be honest, I haven't seen that match. I can, I can. This was one of the ones I can watch. So I don't know if he was running Nakanato GX too. I, I think he should have been, but he was running the Dugong as well. Uh, this is the new Zorok GX variant. Uh, using Persian, when you get a GX knockout, you can search for any two cards, and you have Nakanatal GX, which basically lets you get a really nice win against Tag Team GX Pokemon, like the Zorok and Zekrom, the Zekrom and Pikachu GX deck. I'm going to talk about that later, uh, but he was definitely running the Dugong. The Masters Division, of course, Stevan Ivanov from France. Can you guys guess what deck he was using? Zorok GX, of course. The Zorok GX Persian uh, GX Nakanatal GX Dugong deck. Uh, this one I definitely know. I watched pretty much all of his games. Really glad this guy won instead of uh, uh, that dude with the crazy socks, Emery. But yeah, Stefan, Stefan Ivanov, one of the best players, uh, definitely. Always with his Zorok GX deck. And just like he said, he believed in the deck and Zorok believed in him favoring that consistency, that control Zorok GX gives you. And with this, the last major event before the rotation was once again won by Zorok GX, a Zorok GX variant. A lot of crazy shit happened with this run, but I'll get to that when we talk about the top 8. Now, regarding the event itself, the biggest takeaway that everybody got was the complete lack of Reshiram and Charizard GX, especially on the stream. It was like the casters wanted to showcase some Reshiram and Zorok GX and barely got the chance to. I mean, going into the event, because Reshiram and Charizard GX is a deck that I've used a lot ever since it got out. I toyed a bit with it in Expanded using m but then I went with the standard uh, Welder build, playtested a lot with it. Even though I was kind of wrong with my predictions on the last Nationals, I was kind of spot on with this one. As somebody that playtested with Reshiram and Charizard GX, that, that deck, it really just is bad against the mirror match. It has a really bad mirror match. It all comes down to a lot of luck. Who gets to play first to get that Kiawe? Yeah, I know you've got that thing with Volcanion. When you play second, you can kind of get those far energies that way. But the player that goes first and gets that Kiawe has complete advantage. You're ready to attack with Reshiram and Charizard GX. And it does indeed have a good matchup against Zekrom. And Pikachu, if it gets set up, all they gotta do is just put the choice ban and they can get an easy one-hit knockout on that deck. But the Zekrom and Pikachu deck is a lot more consistent in comparison with the Reshiram and Charizard deck, I would say. You also have a lot more options with attackers. You can use the Zapdos. You've got the Tapu Koko GX play you can make. A lot of different other cards and more rich support, I would say. Fire is basically all about energy acceleration, but Lightning, they've got... The Electro Powers, they've got, they can even utilize the Dene GX better, even attack with that Pokemon. They've got that Radar, instantly adding Lightning GX Pokemon into the hand. And overall, it's just a more well-rounded deck. Like, Zekrom and Pikachu GX decks basically took the more, most spots on Day 2. It was a really popular deck, Day 1 as well. And it just, it makes a lot of sense to go with a more consistent option rather than just going with Reshram, where, like I said, it's, just, it's not that good against the mirror match. There's a lot of luck involved with that deck. It can't deal with its weakness as well as Pikachu and Zekrom GX can. Pikachu and Zekrom, like I've said, is more well-rounded. You can make an attack, and if you know you're going to die, you grab the energies, attach them to another Pokemon with full Blitz. You don't got to attach them to Zekrom, you know, if you know you're not going to make the GX attack, but... You know, the fire deck, you're just really putting all of your eggs in one basket. And Welder, it's just, if you don't get the Kiawe, play first, get the Kiawe, and then just start from there using Welders, you're going to run out of gas. But anyways, enough about Reshiram and Charizard GX. It was a big surprise for many people. 
My surprise is that the deck couldn't even make it to top 8. I thought maybe at least one of them would make it to top 8, but it didn't. A lot of Zorok GX as well, the new variant that Stefan Ivanov was running, like I've said, with an Akinatal, a GX, and Persian GX. Not many, not everybody opted to run the Dugong. A lot of people thought the card wasn't as good anymore, just wasn't as efficient. But in my opinion, I mean, you know, doing that snipe for just a triple boost energy, you know, Stefan Ivanov definitely believed, you know, the card is good, you guys better run it. And he reaped the, the rewards. Uh, even the seniors division, uh, the guy that won, uh, he was running Dugan in his deck. Zapdos, Jirachi decks also did very well. The ones that had less focus on Zekrom and Pikachu GX and more focus on Zapdos with Ultra Beast techs and what have you also did very well. Fucking, fucking stall troll decks, unfortunately, did kind of well too. There was a lot of them. Man, that fucking, the most negative highlight for me from day one was Yudas Kamatsuda's match. It just seems like that guy is so unlucky. Every time he comes to these big tournaments, he always, he almost always shows up in these national tournaments. They always show him on the stream, and then just something fucked up happens. He gets really unlucky. You know, this time, as soon as I, I learned he was playing that fucking stall troll deck, Regigas and Hoopa, I was really annoyed. I knew that, I mean, this guy's good, but he, he probably, he, you, you can't win. You just can't fucking win against those decks especially with the deck he was running. He was running Zorok GX with Silverly GX, and it was a really long match. It was just one match. He was doing really good. You know, he kind of made it close. I thought, hey, maybe he can do it, but then he fucking lost, and this is how those fucking stall decks win. It basically just takes forever. They may get one win, or if they play up against a guy and they, they scoop early, and then not enough time for game two, and then they just fucking lose and the stall player just gets like an easy one win you know time is called and they win like that and it's just it's just absolute shit i hate those fucking decks nevertheless that's what happened and i think i should talk about the top eight right now i'm gonna put this image here this is from poker stats i always use it every time ever since i learned about them these guys are excellent they give perfect coverage for all these major events other any other pokemon tcg events they have you covered so, as you guys can see here, in this top 8, there's a lot of variety. There was basically 7 different decks with only 2 of the same decks, 2 Zekrom GX decks in the top 8. We have, at seat number 1, it was Martin Yanuz with Malamar. Now, I'm really happy that Malamar made it into the top 8. And the thing is with Malamar is that every fucking Nationals, I hear this every time from the commentators, even Puka, they say this... Yeah, Malamar, nobody expected this, uh, nobody expected to be so popular, nobody expected to make it top 8, nobody expected it to, to do good, basically. And it always happens, like, World Championship, it was the runner-up, that dude running the Malamar deck with all those techs. Uh, last year's US Nationals, we had Adam Hawkins using Malamar, make it in a top four. And I just knew once again this year that one of those decks was gonna make it, do very well, and people were gonna be saying the same shit again. Oh, nobody thought about this. It's it's a very good deck. With alternate Cosmic GX, you have such a great advantage against all of the tag team GXs being used. If there was a lot of Reshrams, Reshram and Charizard GX, against Zekrom and Pikachu GX is very good, against any other tag team GX. And other GXs too, like Stage 1 GXs, you just take care of them so easily. Just huge advantage once that deck gets rolled in. You just really need a good consistent list and the right player to pilot it. There was another Malamar player that was doing very well, and he was the one I was rooting for, Noah Sayer. Very consistent ass list. I think he needed one more win to make it to the top 8, uh, but he lost. But he did very, very well with Malamar. And once again, people were surprised. Stoic, chill player. Uh, his match against Magnus Peterson was one of the best. Also a very good player. Stoic and chill. Uh, really ruthless ass players. Uh, speaking of that guy, Magnus Peterson, he did make it to the top eight using Zapdos Ultra Beast. This guy actually was the world champion uh, last year for the seniors division. He was using uh, Benetti GX with, I think, Garbodor, Buzzle, some other techs, but... Really did really well. Uh, very impressive to make it in 
the Nationals' top eight. Uh, excellent player, very young, batting out with the more experienced players. So that was very good. Then we had uh, Blaisfell on deck too, and Nathaniel Kaplan. I didn't watch any of these guys' matches. I don't think they showed them on stream, or maybe I missed them, but I was kind of surprised. I mean, this, this deck, I thought... I, I forgot to mention it in my best decks from Unbroken Bonds, to be honest. But I thought, hey, it's no big deal. It probably won't be very good anyway. It does have, have that great ability to get big knockouts on the biggest Pokemon, only using a stage one attack, only using a basic attacker. But the problem is, we really need to get that welder going to build this attack. Otherwise, you're basically stuck. But I guess he did make it to the top eight. All right. We had that Stuntfisk deck, of course, with Hunter Butler. I did watch that guy's games, too, against Stefan Ivanov. Man, he won against Stefan in basically five seconds once he opened up with that Honchkrow GX. Markrow then got it into Honchkrow, and Stefan couldn't do anything. So that was a crazy game, but also made it in the top eight. Uh, Preston Ellis, this guy, I'm not going to pretend that I was happy with this guy. The fucking stall decks, I hate them. I just fucking hate them. But he did make it. I guess he was running Vileplume too. A uh, good metal call, you could say, against all of the basic Pokemon being used. And Diego Casiraga, uh, another very accomplished player. Still with that fucking beanie he always wears. Uh, a really good comic relief guy, but excellent player as well from Argentina. Uh, he's matched with Stefan Ivanov. Man, it's just Stefan Ivanov, his fucking run. Like I've said, he... Lost against Hunter Butler in five seconds, so that was really nerve-wracking. Then against Magnus Peterson, he got kind of lucky. Magnus Peterson made a very big mistake, retreating two times in a turn, so he got that two-price penalty. Uh, but then Stefan got a penalty against Diego Casiraga. Accidentally, he was about to draw a third card after using trade-in, uh, but he still managed to win. So yeah, crazy, crazy shit, a lot of crazy shit. But you got to admit, it was a good variety in the top eight. Lots of different decks. And in general, the tournament had a lot of different decks going. Even though, of course, a lot Zekrom and Zorak were probably the most popular ones throughout day one and day two. There was fucking Weezing. There was Shedinja. This Stunfisk desk. I think there was other people using the Stunfisk deck. I could be wrong. But overall, it was a really fly tournament. A lot of good... You know, highlights, like I've said, Honchko GX, make it in a top deck, make it in a top eight. We haven't seen Honchko, like they've said, like Kyle Sabaha said, being in such a high level tournament in top decks for God knows, like since the Supreme Victor Honchko was good during the SP days. But yeah, that was kind of cool. It was kind of sad, like I've said, with Yuta Kamatsu, that he always have that bad luck in these tournaments, damn it. And. The Martin Yanus player uh, with Malamar. I really hoped he was going to make it in top four at least if he wasn't going to win. Uh, his, his, he was also using Gengar too. Gengar GX, another cool thing. Uh, Gengar GX and Mimikyu, a Pokemon that I've used a lot and enjoyed and expanded. He just lost to Diego, man. He just it, His deck didn't look that good to me. I don't know, but I guess he made it top eight. I really like that... Noah Sayer uh, player a lot more. His deck was much better, I think. Uh, yeah. But I think I'm going to finish this video, guys. This is basically the event. Uh, it's important to note, like they've said in the tournament, uh, the shit is going to be completely different for the World Championship in around a month or two. The rotation is going to happen before that event. So many of the best cards and decks that were used here and that are very good won't be around. This was the last time Zorok GX had the chance to shine in standard. What a Pokemon, man. This this guy is definitely on the level of Garchomp. See, Garchomp C-level X from back then. Just that dominant. That fucking good. Just winning everything. It doesn't matter if it's just from Shining Legends. It's still so good, man. Damn. But this, one's, this was the last tournament. This guy got to shine in. A lot of other cards are going to rotate out. Maybe Malamar is going to be better, though. Uh, it's not going to be affected too much. But yeah, very good tournament. Looking forward to the World Championship 2. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you guys subscribe, leave a like, and share this video with your friends. 
and I'll see you guys on the next one. I need, I know I need to put some decks and matches and do some shit, but I had to take off the days to just watch everything for the national championship and make this recap because I always want to know what the fuck I'm talking about. I don't want to make a half-assed video where I haven't actually watched the event. Anyways, guys, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you guys enjoyed this U.S. Nationals event if you watched it. Uh, thank you guys for watching my shit. As always, subscribe, share this with your friends, and I'll see you next time. Saber Wolf 4 we'll say...